a, a nutritional reset enhances our body's health and supports our emotions, minds, and spirit. Our bodies need the right balance of nutrients to function optimally. Many nutrients dance together to support the dynamic interactions within the body. When nutrients are missing, the delicate balance within the body is disturbed, affecting our health and our ability to fully spiritually connect to the one. Reverend Dr. Sarah has a, a huge background in nutrition and education and all sorts of other really cool things. And I'm so pleased that you're here and are gonna do this. So welcome. Thank you. It's my joy to be here. And if Jerry, can you just, I got it. You, that you can, you can say yes. I have rewritten this talk many times. Well, because I was talking to people here at the conference and they had questions, but what I really want to bring, bring to you is the current information. Before I arrived here, I was at a three-day workshop in Chicago. As, is this better? Yes. And I was with Dr. Jeffrey Bland, who is considered the father of functional medicine. And the reason this is so exciting is that everything I had learned in the previous educational experience was turned on its head because the advances in science are so great. The basic information is that nutrients dance together. And one of the things that I so enjoy is that we are having laughter. And laughter is one of the most important things that we can talk about when we're dealing with a stress reset. Now, one of the interesting ideas that interested me since I've been in New Thought is life healing. And we have heard this from our teachers in the past, and we are very familiar with the Fillmores. And, and I need some. Okay, sir, is, there, is this going on? No. I, I know what it is. You know what it is? I do. Yeah. I don't okay. know what that is, but I know what the What's echo going on? I know the echo. I'm hearing the echo. Yeah, the echo. So. I know the echo. Okay. But we have to get that PowerPoint back up. <laughs> Thank you. How many no, ministers no. does it take to? <laughs> there, echo taken care of. Okay, now we can get back to the attention. Yeah, let's go to the second one. Thank you. And I hit, I believe I hit enter. One of the things I find so exciting and that I've been looking at is the life healings that we have reported in our traditional educators and ministers. And being from a very strong academic medical center, I live in the uh, medical world. And in fact, this year I was actually part of the essential workers for COVID and I was working with our dietetic interns in order to get them ready to make a difference in the health of our clients. And the patients that seemed to do well even now were the ones that had a strong spiritual background and understood the importance of healing and the thoughts that go with it. And I put these individuals names up there because we should be all familiar with them and the one that really struck me was Frederick Bales in that your mind can heal you and his story was that he had diabetes and he was able to turn it around and we also know with Ernest Holmes that we've had an impact on his teaching. Now the big news that I mentioned almost five years ago is that one of the messages was we're not our genes, but we are our genes. And when you look at this, we are called a holobunt. And that means of the genes in our body, we only have 10% of them they think are human. And they say, I know, only 10%. And so that means that we are a super organism. And in this picture that you see up there, they're saying that the area from the knee down to your heel is the only part of your body that's human. The rest of them are all bugs, genes. I'm, bug genes. 
bug genes. They are, the, the microbiome is what we have. And these are individuals, this is going to be our viruses, our bacteria, our phages. That's all part of what we now call the microbiome. There are some people that will not wash because if they use soap, they will remove the microbiome from their skin. Now, they're the only way to identify some of these microbiotic creatures are to actually look at any of our orises and you can actually do swab tests and find what your microbiome is. What is so exciting about the microbiome is that it's tucked everywhere and we can't always culture it because they are hiding. They're in our adipose tissue. They're in our little organelles and in fact, You've heard about the micro, um, uh, um, micro uh, excuse me, the mitochondria. And we talk about that as being the powerhouse of the cell. But did you know that that was originally a bacteria <laughs> that actually merged with us? So this is the new stuff. And when I was studying this, I created a class, a three credit graduate class for my students. And when I understood about the magnitude of the microbiome, I was on my knees. I want you to know it so changed my point of view of how we handle life. And these are some pictures of our new friends that I'm introducing to you. Uh, sometimes we think of them as being bacteria, but <laughs> they're not. Uh, we've got fungi, we have viruses, we have living cells, and these are anaphages, are the new hot topic, uh, that are coming on because they will actually attack some of the bacteria. So it's really rather exciting because as we go and look at this, the microbiome is one of our largest organs. It is dry weight, uh, a kilogram or 2.2 pounds and it is part of an ecosystem and I was told at this workshop with Dr. Bland that we have more genes in our body than there are stars in the heavens. More genes in our body than there are stars in the heavens. I mean, this is really powerful. This is why I'm trying to tell you uh, why I wanted to share this with you, because this is a new organ, and this influences so much. And it is connected to every organ in our body, and it's responsive to food, to exercise, to sleep, and to stress. Now, in this picture, I want you to look at the connections that they've identified. And the scientists are finding even more and more connections. But if you look at this, and if you think of the microbiome being centered in your GI tract, what happens is that through the vagus nerve to the brain, we have a super highway of information that's going on. And I want you to think about this in terms of there's constant communication going on and if we had a really teeny little microphone, you could hear the rhythm and the noise of the channels within our body opening and closing and things rushing through. And being a Midwest girl, I'm hearing this as a square dance where we have a collar and we have things that are going around. And when we look at a cell in particular, and they now have a new electron microscope, that they can look into a cell and see where everybody is and what they're all doing. And we are now calling us an ecosystem. Now, one of the things I want to call your attention to as you look at this picture, and if you look at the space, notice how the cells are, are all coming together and they're touching and they kind of look like little goonies. Well, and when you look at this, on the rounded part, that is the part that actually is sitting inside your GI tract. And I have another picture to show it to you. But because we now have an information highway, can you begin to envision how so many things are going to be impacting this? 
And the reason I like this picture is Dr. Janine was talking about the impact on the brain when we were doing touching. And you can see that the limbic section is being identified in this particular picture. And then it goes on and we are looking at all the connections that are present there. And in the area in between, one of my favorite nerve endings that I don't have a good picture of here is going to be uh, the dendritic cells. And they can kind of reach through this barrier. Now, when you look at this picture, that little humpy, bumpy, bumpy, you know, those are the cells that are going into the lumen. So what they do, do you see all those little buggies down there? What happens, I'm going to go to the next picture because I think it's really juicy gooey. This, <laughs> this is an artist's <laughs> understanding of what it looks like. And that ooey gooey on the top is the mucus that is covering the, the cell tissue, the epithelium. The ooey gooey is that green goopy there, and it is mucus. And this mucus is one cell thick, and it covers our GI tract. Now, what happens is this part down there with its really beautiful colors is what's happening on within the cells of the GI tract. Now, those of you that have glucose into uh, gluten intolerance, I want you to look at where the cells abut. And in order to keep them together, they have what, are, what I call zippers <laughs> or buttons. And what happens is with these, they're called tight junctions, and they hold the cells together. And those of you that are sensitive to gluten actually find that the zolulin, which is a component of gluten, will come down and open that zipper so that all of the compounds that are in your GI tract can move through in between the cells. Now, some of the cells do this on purpose, but this is not what I'm talking about. This is not what you want to have happen. And that leads you to, you've heard, a leaky gut. I've heard that mentioned several times. Now, if you do have celiac disease, this is going to be more or less constant for you. And that's why glucose has to be avoided forever. Those of you that have sensitivity or have some kind of gut dysfunction will find that if you remove your gluten, over time, that junction will come back together. And you may not need to have gluten re removed from your diet forever. Now, in order to determine whether this is going to happen for you, I recommend that you contact a practitioner that is listed on the website of the Institution of Functional Medicine. And if you put in your zip code on that website, they will tell you where there is a functional medicine physician who can work with you on this. And as I mentioned, Dr. Bland is considered the father of functional medicine. And a lot of the physicians that are in the listing have been traditionally trained. But they personally had a life event that found that what medicine they knew didn't help solve the problem. So they are the ones that are, that are very knowledgeable and very sympathetic. Now, I will tell you that the evaluations can be pricey initially because they're going to do a lot of evaluative tests to see where you are on this picture. But I tell you, it's upfront investment because by the time that you've gone through this work, and I don't know if any of you have done this, you will find that the costs of your health care go down. They absolutely go down. And they're able to get resolution over time that many of you would be very interested in doing. Now, when I look at this area on this picture, we have a lot of activities that are going on, and we have a very busy GI tract. I want to remind you that you'll see a picture of the thymus gland, and that is part of our immune system. We also have in the middle the lymphatics that are going on, and then we have cells down below. So once you get through the GI tract and it gets into circulation, we begin to have it going throughout your whole entire body. And it's very, and the reason it, it got me on my knees, I realized. I am not alone. I mean, I am a super organization of 
of these incredible critters. And it was kind of like, well, what do I need to do to take care of them? Uh, this is a really sacred honor because they're my defense team. They're the ones that are part of my immune system. They're the ones that are going to help me be healthy. But there's a little problem with this, too. All of this process begins in utero. And the information from dad and the information from mom come together and create this union. And we could have an imprint from our parents that imprints for health, or we could have one that imprints for illness. And the new theory is, can we make changes and rehab and redo our immune system and our microbiome? That's the current theory. And there's a lot of good research in order to explain that. Now, as we go forward, this is beginning to show you the connections between what we eat, how it impacts the microbiome, the information as it goes out through circulation, and how it affects everything about us. And isn't that amazing? Yeah. And it has really changed how I look at immunity now, just from this weekend before I came here. Because what they're saying is that there are two parts of the immune system. One is called adaptive. And that is the one that kind of is a slow responder. And we have the innate. And the innate is the quick responder. And they thought that was not much of anything. It was just, you know, well, that's your defense, first line of defense. And uh, they're not much of anything. But you'll find that that seems to be where the control for immunity is, is in the innate um, immunity system. And it's more than I, I want to um, talk about here. So we begin to have this interaction and this dance. And it is controlled by the microbiome, which you cannot see. And this is simply another picture of the connections. So have you noticed when you go and you give a talk? I don't know if any of you give talks or anything. Um, <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you ever have that tummy thing going on? Absolutely. Right. Well, you know, that's coming from your brain. Yeah, and what we need to do is to make that connection and understand how we can control it. Now, what I said earlier is that this comes from our parents. And it starts in utero, and we begin to have the formation of our immune system and the microbiome as we go through life. When we are born, we are given a slug of the microbiome from our maternal, my mother, your mother, as they go, we go through the birth canal. Then when people are feeding, breastfeeding, that is when the microbiome begins to grow and to expand and to develop. And by the time that we are five years old, we have about a complete microbiome, which is actually when we have a complete brain development. And the reason I make a mention of this is that the GI tract and our brain grow up together in utero. Now, as we go through our lives, our microbiome changes. And young, it might be very vigorous. And as we get older, things begin to die off, and they kind of go away. And, and we look old. Um, anyway, what I want to talk about is fiber, and I want to thank out everyone for letting, uh, for crediting us with uh, the food that we're eating. And if you notice, at lunch and at dinner, you had lots of vegetables, and we had soluble and we had insoluble fiber. And the thing that's really fun about it is, I don't really like salads. The reason I don't like salads is I don't like the texture. I get taste fatigue. But give me a cooked vegetable. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it. Did you know there's no difference in fiber content between a salad or a cooked vegetable? No. Yeah, I know. Isn't that amazing? It doesn't change. So everybody over here is eating salad. Now, I. The team here is very different, but I usually don't eat salads because I don't know where they came from, how they were prepared, how they're washed. And they are a major source of foodborne illness, so I'm not a big fan. But, that's, but if I'm at home and I am preparing it for myself, I'm a fan. 
but not usually when I'm going out. So these are examples of soluble and insoluble fiber, and you'll see different ones that are available. And some of the foods on the lower end are going to be our prebiotics. And they're the ones that are going to be help supporting our microbiome. So when I'm talking about what you need to eat, I'm needing, I want, for me, it's sacred because I am now feeding my microbiome. And I want it to take care of me for a long time. And so I go, what do I need to eat? What do I need to eat? So the food that you are eating here is set up to support this. Thank you. You're welcome. And I want you to know that your microbiome changes in 36 hours. Yes. So those of you that started eating here on Monday should have the buzz going on. Right? It happens that quickly. And which is really kind of exciting and fun. Now, I want to talk about a stress reset program that has been piloted. It is in aging uh, 221. And what happened is they took a lot of people between the ages of 45 to 70, and they gave them a diet prescription. And then after they had individualized the eating pattern, they gave them pre and probiotics. They gave them an exercise program. They corrected their sleep, and they managed their stress. And the punchline is that they were able to improve their DNA and move back in time three years. Wow. So I want to, isn't that exciting? It's so exciting because it's what we've been teaching, but we've never put the whole picture together. And they have patented this, but I'm going to tell you how to do it anyway. So individualization of your eating pattern is what I do. I am a registered dietitian. I have a doctorate in nutritional sciences. And I'm actually the director of a dietetic internship program. So this is what I do. My ministry is health and wellness. And this process takes a while to do, but it's easily done. It just takes some time. So there's an individual prescription that's given. So those of you that have any kind of allergies, that would be worked in. If you have any problems with gluten, that would be worked in. If you are a vegan, vegetarian, an omnivore, that can be worked in. Now, the reason you need to consider supplements is that if you are not eating a particular food group, the nutrients that are naturally occurring in that food are no longer available to you. So for example, people that have lactose intolerance and they're choosing not to drink milk are going to miss all of those nutrients that are in that liquid milk. So we need to look at how to get that back into that individual. And it takes a lot of food to make up for something that you've taken away. And that is why you need to be evaluated to see if you need supplements. I can tell you I take supplements because I have a genetic problem with osteoporosis and arthritis that I got from both of my parents. So with the genes and the supplements, I can reduce the intensity of that and not be affected by that, by actually the supplements and the diet. Now, those of you uh, for exercise, it's very important. And it's not for the reason that you think. If you are jumping up and down or dancing or moving, or you're walking or swimming or biking, what you're doing is stimulating the microbiome and our blood flow. So if we were to practice walking after every meal, we would be taking that nutrient-rich blood and sending it up to our brain. And we would affect it immediately. We can make changes by this with people that have ADD. We can make changes for people that have autism. This works every time. And some of the recommendations that we're getting from guidelines may not work for you individually, and we may need to consider doing something else. I don't subscribe to low fat because our brain needs a high level of fat. And when we are young babies, and you look at the composition of human milk, it's 50% fat. 
And some of the issues that we're finding with young children is that their mothers didn't have enough fat during the pregnancy, and it's affecting neurologic development. So when I'm talking about exercise prescription, find something that you want to do. And the recommendation is to do it every day and do something for 30 minutes. Now, the reason I then move down and I, I want to jump down to stress management, we excel at that. We just talked about earlier about walking meditation. Can you imagine hitting your exercise goals as you're meditating? How wonderful. I like swimming because I'm now in a zone where no one can absolutely bother me. So that's my exercise. That's my stress management. Stress management, they don't talk about as meditation, but they talk about the program that Benson did out of Harvard when he was traveling in, in Tibet. It's very simple. It has another name. But this is where I think we excel in terms of being able to do stress management by doing our meditation, by doing our morning work, and by doing our exercise. It's wonderful. We already do these things. Now, the one thing I've heard since I've been here is the problem is sleep. I'm hearing a lot of problems with people not sleeping well, and that happens as we get older. And um, Dr. Johnson used to say that the second sleep, when we get up and do something, actually is the most productive. So from about the 1700s, there were a lot of people that would actually go to bed early, then they would wake up, they would do work, and then they would go back to sleep again. So what I want to share here is that it's the little things every day that we do that are going to make a difference. And if you have a health challenge, like a tummy that doesn't function right, if you have diabetes, if you have arthritis, you need to begin to find a functional medicine physician who can identify what's going on for you. What I want you to know is that this is a huge big problem for me as I work in a medical center. And a lot of people think they're eating well. And they come into the hospital and they have vitamin C deficiency or scurvy. They have niacin deficiencies. They have thiamine deficiencies. If they're coming in for organ transplant, they are limited in how much zinc they have in their diet. So one of the things I teach people to do, my students to do, is to do a, a physical exam to see if I can see any visual manifestation of a nutritional deficiency. And who would ever think that this was the case? At the beginning of October, there was a national worldwide campaign to talk about malnutrition and its impact. And people who come to the hospital with documented nutritional deficiencies that we find have a rocky medical course. And what we do for those people that are coming in for surgery, we have to delay it until they are nutritionally sound enough to be able to do this surgery. So it is a very serious situation. And when we are working with our congregation, we need to be encouraging lifestyle medicine, which is what this calls, or lifestyle whatever. You can call it anything you want. But it's absolutely critical. And you will find the individuals that hit their hundreds are because they're following this kind of pattern. And this uh, isn't including you know, the bourbon or whatever it takes for you to sleep at night. That's not included in this. The idea is that when you get things back in balance, you will find that you'll be able to sleep well. And the reason you need to sleep is that is the only time that housekeeping in the brain can happen. There is no other exit other than the, the spinal fluid that comes through. And it comes down your spine and eventually gets excreted. But if you don't have enough REM sleep, if you don't do that, you're not going to be able to protect your body. So sleep is very important. Sleep is also important because it goes after those pathogens that are present in your body. And I was at a medical conference, and one of the physicians had put on a mouse on a, like a light, and he was showing the circulation. And he was looking at what happened with the microphages. 
And I don't know if you've ever seen a picture of that, but think of Halloween and think about mace. You know that weapon that has spikes all over? Okay, the macrophages look like that, and they look like boulders. And they go through your circulation, like hitting each other, hitting the walls, going around, and it's the cleaning service. And it will knock out any uh, pathogens that's in its presence and puncture holes in it. And then the phagocytes, which are the vacuum cleaners, will come and suck it up, and they will break it apart, and they will eliminate it. And the process is so exciting and so amazing that it allows me to feel humble about the home that we live in. And we can rehab it, we can reset it by what we choose to do. And this system responds very well to what we do in meditation, spiritual mind treatment, I'm being a religious scientist, and it works every, every time. And you can see change. So if you're working with someone in your congregation, they need a coach. They need you to say, good for you. How is this working? How does this feel? What's, what do we need to do? I also wanted to show you how simple this is. We've done it by the food that you have here at the conference. You've done it in terms of hitting the walking trails when you did the labyrinth walk, when we do our spiritual mind treatment as we get ready to do it. And I have to tell you, I think these rooms are wonderful for sleeping. They're quiet. The bed is comfortable. There's writing on the wall. And we're in a safe place to put our burden down. And we can leave it here. We don't need to take it home. We need to be recharged and know that we can make a difference. So those of you that choose to follow this plan, I want you to tell me next year when we get together how it worked for you. Uh, how you're feeling. I mean, the microbiome, you may not, it's there. It is the caller for every system. It talks to your heart, your brain, your liver, your lungs, your bones, your your blood, I mean, it's everywhere. There isn't a place in your body that you do not have some member of the microbiome. It is huge. Is it time for questions? Yes, it is time for questions. You, uh, I heard you say exercise after every meal? Oh, like a, no, I was saying after dinner, for example. And it, if you feel like you want to picnic and then go walking, that's fine. The recommendation is a minimum of 30 minutes a day. A day, and I can tell you, going back to my room, you know, in between sessions, you, that is exercise. Okay. I mean, it's it's easier than you think. It's just moving your body. It's moving your body. Okay. It's moving your body. I also want to, before I forget, Unity has a wonderful magazine that's on the back table, and this is where Greg Braden talks about the power of prayer. But there's a whole section in here on the microbiome. Yeah, on the front page. So, so you can take a, uh, a read on it. This is, this is very cutting stuff. Eleanor. This is amazing because this set is half of what I am teaching tomorrow at 1. And it includes every single one. And it's a checkpoint to see how you're behaving. It does not seek to include nutrition. I, 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 I can show you how the meditation the mindfulness, the present moment, and the doorway to becoming God, that, that moment when you really know that you are, you, for a second, it doesn't last long. See, the other half of the program, they work together. Yes, they do, and I can tell you that when you have this in balance, it's, it, I can tell you the difference. It's like, oh, you want me to treat for you? Boom. Do you want to do this? Boom. It's like I'm constantly walking in the presence. I am, um, it's just marvelous. Right. And I would love to have you all have this wonderful feeling. And it's because you yourself are bad. That's what I'm discovering. I've lived uh -huh. this way for years, and I can see where everybody is. Right. And I want right. them to know. But our congregants may not have this information. They're struggling, and, what, and they need help. They need help, and that's what I'm also talking about. Another question. 
Well, you kind of went through fast, so can you go back and talk about how do you find that? You didn't go up to go the thing back, but just how do you find the functional uh, doctors? Would you say those are Institute? Okay. Institute of Functional Medicine. We call it IFM, Institute of Functional Medicine, and find their website, and then look for a practitioner, and put in your zip code. And they, they may not have one in your particular area, but you can do some research, how, long you, how many miles you want to drive, and then interview these people to see if they're a match for you. You know, make sure it's a match for you. Because if it's not a match, it won't work. And I found bad. I've had bad experience finding the right people. But when you find, yeah, but when you find the right people. Oh, George, you're waving. Tell me about some great uh, fat foods that I'm supposed to eat. <laughs> fat foods? Butter. Butter is one of the good fats. Everyone doesn't talk about that. No, 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 no. Butter. Butter is one of the best. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Um, it's actually butter. Some people like olive oil. You can actually get butter to, uh, mixed with olive oil if that's of your interest. Uh, the other kind of fats, and I know a lot of you are choosing not to, but dairy is one of the best. Really? Full fat, oh yes, full fat dairy. It is anti-inflammatory. It has calcium. It has phosphorus. It's, it's a good food. Another one that you may not believe is a good food is white potatoes. White it's a good white potatoes. They're a good source of vitamin C. Didn't you know that? Uh, yes. So I mean, there are a lot of judgments that are in media that aren't quite right. Yes. Can you simplify for stopping in a system that would tighten the immune system? Like, Everything is a system. I I don't know. Or with a heightened immune system. The GI tract. The the immune. You want to know about the immune system? Oh, what has happened, it's overstimulated. It's overstimulated because it's not in balance. And what happens, it stays elevated. And so you need to actually have a therapeutic intervention to, to quiet it down. And then once it's quieted down, you can go into a maintenance program. That's why I'm recommending that you need to work with a functional medicine physician. I can give you some basic information, but they do more than I can do. They can test. Uh, Excuse me, George was talking about this at lunch, poo. They can um, check your blood to see what kind of nutrient deficiencies are available. Uh, they can actually talk about, uh, do you have anything that's interfering with stress? I mean, stress is a big deal. And food has a big component to be a stress, stress reliever. You can get a genetic test to see if you can't process coffee well. Some people just don't clear it from the system, and it isn't a good choice. Uh, if you are really, really stressed out, one of the best beverages to have is actually black tea. And tea has in it an amino acid called theanine. And theanine quiets the mind. And you may find supplements in the store that has theanine and melatonin together for sleep. So you may find that product available. So, uh, so when you're stressed out and having a bad day, I would recommend a little sugar and a good cup of black tea and sit down with a good friend and cry, and you will feel a thousand times better. And that's a food example. So, yes? Sir, what do you, what do you know about diets for blood types? There are a lot of people that are looking into that one. I haven't spent time with that. I'm interested in the uh, red blood cells because they now seem to be part of our immune system. And what they do is they go around and pick up, uh, they look at particular DNA strands that are available and they'll pick them up and clear them from the system. So I'm more interested in total blood and hemoglobin levels. So I, I don't know much about that one, yes? No, I haven't heard about the plan. It's, it's a book written by a dietitian, um, and it's kind of an elimination diet. Yes. And um, my significant other and I did it um, about just when the pandemic started. Right. right. We stuck home. Um, and it, for us, it was really interesting because there are certain foods that, that cause... Um, um, inflammatory re response. Yes. And it's a way to eliminate those inflammatory things from your 
from your diet, which you might not even know right. that you've been eating all along and right. you don't know, you know, oh, you're bloated, but why? Yes, you that know? is true. Yeah. Uh, those are, are wonderful to do, but I think you need to have it part of a more systematic plan because once you have foods eliminated, you need to get the nutrients back in and you need to find a way of doing it. And I do not like most of the over counter medicate drugs supplements that you get because they're not necessarily vetted I look for the ones that are called pharmaceutical grade the ones that are available to physicians the ones that I know best are metagenics pure encapsulation orthomolecular and designs for health and uh, some pure designs for health uh, pure encapsulations these are brands? Yeah. Brands. These are companies. Okay. Uh, um, Metagenics and Orthomolecular. And if you go to a functional medicine pharmacy, they will carry these. And they will be initially expensive. I'm going to just tell you up front. You could easily spend $300 a month on these products. But what they're doing is they're a medical treatment. And once you've corrected the problem, you can cut back. So there are a lot of things that you can do. But uh, the recommendation is, from a dietitian point of view, my comment, I will do a detailed history to hear what you're doing, looking at your system, looking at what I think might be happening, and develop an eating program for you. And I like to adjust the diet first, and then be able to add the supplements and the medications back. I want you to know that a diet called the DASH diet dietary approach to stop hypotension that's a freebie on the government website will drop blood pressure in two weeks like a beta blocker. What's it called, DASH? DASH, that's the abbreviation, D-A-S-H. Dietary. dietary approach to stop hypertension. It has been in existence for over 30 years. It was developed by the research dietitians looking at the information they had at that time for hypertension. They combined it all together and it works. So I would start with something like that. You can do it yourself and then go from there. Is it a government website? It's a government, it's a, a national, well just write in DASH diet and look for the one that has the government. And they have menu plans, they have locations. So we need to get ready and practice uh, our nutrition at dinner tonight. You're welcome. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. It's my, it's my gift to serve. All right. So let me just say thank you so much, Sarah. Unbelievable. You're welcome. Oh, fantastic. My gift. <laughs> and um, we have dinner right now, 530 to 630, a small. Um, and at 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, if you guys have seen... Um, Mark Anthony Lord, then you know what, we're, what you're in for. Yeah. If you had not seen him, you don't know what you're in for, but let me tell you, you want to be here. Yeah. So 7 o'clock in this very room. Right. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.